Okay, if you've been diagnosed with a disc bulge or a herniation in your lumbar spine, you're getting lower back pain, and you've got some exercises to do, then I'm gonna show you what we give to our clients, why they're doing them, and how to do them correctly. And we'll go through each one step by step. Now, the first one, we do this one for people who have got disc pain or pain from a disc bulge or herniation on one side. So if you've got them both sides, you'll probably do it both ways. But this is a relieving type stretch to help us with our other two that we're going to go through. So the first one we give them is lumbar rotation. Now, what I get people doing is starting off on their back because usually this is the most comfortable position for people to be in. They don't like sitting, they don't like bending forward in that acute phase, they want to rest. This position here is usually the most comfortable because it's the most offloaded position for the lumbar spine disc, okay? So when you're in this position, there's no pressure on it really. What we've got to try and do then, they'll still be in pain at this point, is to go firstly to the painful side. The reason we're doing that, if the disc bulge is say on my left-hand side more than my right, if it's a posterior disc bulge and it's bulging out sort of posterior laterally off to the left, we want to go to that left-hand side to try and reduce the pressure around that side. So not away from it and try to stretch out this way, it's going towards it. So what I get people to do if it's left-sided, say, is move and shuffle their feet just over to the left a little bit first, okay? So rather than starting from the center, we go over a little bit to the left. So give them a the shuffle that way. Then what they do is they have their hands out wherever they want. They slowly let their legs slowly, slowly, carefully go over to the left. Now, some people might get a bit of spasm as they do this. So if you're one of those people, just be careful you go slowly through it. You may only be able to go so far. But if you can get, and it's not too sore to do, get all the way over to the left. So your legs are basically on the ground. Your feet are still together, you see that? What I am now, because I've moved my legs over, I am now at like 90 degrees of the hip joint, all right? And my job here is to do nothing. This is to, to try and relax in this position and stay there. Now, most of the time we find, we do test this quite a bit with our clients before we send them home for homework, is if it's left side of pain and they go left and it switches it off, we know that's gonna be really helpful for them. This one, they may go for about one or two minutes sustained. So it's not back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is trying to close down, if you like, the left-hand side posterior disc bulge, reduce it, the pressure in it to an extent to help that muscle spasm switch off and give them some of that pain relief. So this is a really nice offloading one for them to do. And it's really important, one, it helps long-term, but it also helps them get into the position or get them less sore so they can do the other ones which I'll go through. So left-sided, left-sided bulge like that. If you're one of those people that starts off here, okay, and you shuffle over, and you simply can't get any further like this because there's too much spasm, you need to put a pillow here like this and that will give them the support. They can rest their legs on that pillow. So there's a really nice little trick for you to do. Obviously, as you get better and there's less spasm, you can make that pillow less of a height. So you go a little bit further so you can lie in that position because some people, like I said, this is too far from there, too much load stress going on there, so they have to put something under. So that's a really nice one. So that's if you're left-sided and obviously, you know, you've got to be guided by your physio of whether you go back over to the right-hand side. That might be later on. If the, if the problem is very much left-sided, or like you'll go to the left, it's right-sided, you go to the right. Um, if that doesn't work, you need to contact your physio and ask why that's not working. But that is usually one of the most relieving ones to do. So that gets us into extension. So that helps cover sort of the rotation part. We need to work on with posterior disbulge, we need to work on extension to help relieve that as well. So most people, when they have a posterior disc bulge, they can sort of maybe handle lying on their front and maybe they can lie in this position as well. But to get up, they find this really difficult, okay? There's a little bit of pressure there, there's some pain there, maybe some muscle spasm. Eventually, over time, we want people to be able to extend like that, okay? To try and help that whole problem. It's very relieving. However, when you start off, that position is gonna be quite difficult. So what I would do is start off absolutely lying on your front, wait till it settles a little bit. Then you probably go prop on your elbows. The thing about this one is you can't stay for too long. I'd maybe even go from 15 seconds maximum of a minute and then go back down again. Okay, you may even need to roll on your back because we don't want to be sustained in extension for too long, okay? 
ultimately you want to be doing repetitions of what we call McKenzie extensions, which is going upwards this way, which looks like a cobra type pose in yoga, but your hips are on the ground. And that will be a better position because we're trying to sort of milk that disc into getting more and more and more ability to extend. Okay, so the spinal column to be able to extend without spasm. If you hold it there for too long, you may find that jamming effect almost makes it worse. Some people do like lying like that, especially if they need to lie on their front for a little bit. Um, otherwise, you lie flat until that settles down. But when you do this McKenzie extension, you will go hands under shoulders, trying to push backwards with your hands. Don't lift with your lower back. Try not to clench your buttocks and, and help your brain extend from using your buttocks. It's not a sort of like Superman type thing. We're trying to completely relax the upper body. So when you push away, you've got to think about pushing the ground away from you and only going as far and nice and slow as your back can tolerate. If there's a little bit of pain, come back down and take the weight through the hands on the way down. And you might just let it relax there for two seconds. And then you go again. Push away. Every time thinking about pushing away, trying to go that little bit higher if your back allows. So I like to sort of tell people, okay, two seconds down. And then as you go up, and then spend two seconds up there. And then slowly down again. And never rushing this. Over time, we want to get the person all the way there. It may take quite a while, depending on how bad their problem is and how much spasm they've got. When you do this one, you're only doing 10 at a time. So the maximum I'd give people is three sets of 10, and you're doing that as many times a day as your body requires or how much you need to try and relieve it. And this you may find, the more you do this, the less posterior disc pressure you get, the more tolerance you, can, tolerance you have for sitting and standing and walking around. It's not designed so you can sit more, it just gives you more tolerance so your day is better and you can get better faster. That McKenzie extension is absolute gold and it is so important for those people with disc bulges. Some people though, who've got that lateral disc bulge will find that a little bit hard. That's why the rotation and the side glide one we're gonna do is gonna be really helpful to help with that. But if you've been given McKenzie extensions, that's the way you need to do it. Stick with a plan on that and trying to let your whole back relax when you do it your whole buttocks relax with it, sometimes that's hard. But also, don't forget, keep your legs on the ground. Don't let yourself, if you watch me, don't let yourself come up into here and then try and hang, okay? And just keep your pelvis on the ground and extend through your lower back, use your arms. You'll get a bit of arm fatigue, hey, but it's better than back pain. So the last one of the three that we give is side glides. Now I start people off on the wall with this. There are other variations to do. You can do it lying down, you can also do it standing, but the wall one's super effective. And again, this is another McKenzie special for discs or posterior disc bulges that are off to one side. They're really effective if someone is shifted off to one side. So if they're walking in and their pelvis is off to one side and, and, and you know, their body is off to here, it's super effective to help straighten them up but also reduce their pain. Now that can be because you might have a posterior disc bulge that is sort of, because the pain, the bulge is on one side, say my right hand side, that I'm sort of lurching away from that because I don't wanna, if I go on top of it, it feels painful. So I'm sort of not mechanically necessarily pushed away, but my body is, is staying away from that pain. So the most common one is where the pain is say, my right side, it might be from my lower back through my buttock or my leg, and maybe I've got sciatica because I've got some nerve referral there, and I lean away from it, I shift away from it. Now what we've got to do mechanically is try and straighten that person up because otherwise they stay in spasm, they can't get any stronger, they can't, well, it's hard to get it better, but mechanically you're gonna help improve what is happening through the spine. So what we get people doing is leaning against the wall. Now, if you're getting the side glide, you gotta remember, well the first thing you gotta be doing is thinking, if my pain is on one side and I'm away from that side, then I need to put the opposite shoulder against the wall. It sounds a bit confusing, but think of it this way. If I've got pain on my right, I lean to the left, put my left shoulder on the wall. So don't put your right shoulder on the wall. Just start with anyway. If this doesn't work, you need to consult your physio and maybe you're gonna turn around the other way. But starting off, we always get people opposite shoulder against the wall from the pain, okay? So from that point there, don't make the mistake of having your arm there. I want your arm clear, so that arm goes forward, shoulder on the wall, feet 
a little bit further away. Okay, so maybe it's about a foot, foot and a half away from the wall. So what that means is I've got a gap here where my hip is, where I'm going to be able to go in with the hip. So from that point there, I'm straight. I want to slowly let my left hip or pelvis go into the wall. I've got my hand on here like a teapot. I'm not going to push it in, but I'm sort of guiding in where am I going to go, how far can I go, what does that do to my pain on the right-hand side? So with this one, what we're aiming to do, again, like the McKenzie extension, we're going to try and do 10 or so at a time. And you're only going to the point where where's that pain? Does it increase or does it make it feel better? If it feels better, you go further in. Just be careful that sometimes when you come out, you feel a little bit of spasm pain. That's just your body reacting to the movement. But if you can go in and you don't get any pain, you go all the way in. If you are sort of not so bad here, but you go in and you get to the point where there is a bit of pain, stop there, don't go into the pain, don't try and drive into it thinking the pain is better. You just need to go to the pain and then back away. Very slow, just like the McKenzie extension, the McKenzie side glide is very much sort of take a bit of time, pause there maybe for two seconds, slowly come back out, pause again, and keep going. It's very sort of methodical, it's a little bit boring, but hey, if it helps your pain, this is the right thing to do. You, if you spend the time on it, you'll feel better. So this one here, again, do 10, step back, step away, and then you, know, you walk around and see how you feel. The other thing we do with people in the clinic is we test them, okay, do 10, do 20, do 30. What's your shift like? Are they correcting up? A lot of the time, they actually correct that shift because you're creating some changes mechanically in the spine. And sometimes when that pain drops down, the spasm drops down, and you also, the brain allows you to sort of be on top of that disc a little bit better, and you find there's less sort of shifting. Then you can work on some strengthening work and help them stabilize to try and improve that, you know, day on day on day. So if you've been given those three exercises, that's the correct way of doing it. And what we do with clients is test them. What do you like now? Bending backwards, bending forwards. Does it improve those sort of symptoms? Which helps you find that if they're moving forward better, moving back better, following those exercises, it's the right thing to do. And they keep on that path until it stops improving. I hope that helps you with your stretches for your disc problems. See you next time.